Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky wants more help from the U.S. and other allies in his country's war against Russia. In an interview with the New York Times, Zelensky urged allies to do more to defend Ukraine, even proposing NATO shoot down Russian missiles over the Ukrainian airspace. More now with William Taylor, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, and Bill's now the vice president for Europe and Russia at the U.S. Institute of Peace. Ambassador Taylor, welcome back. Um, we we'll put up you know, this article that we were talking about with Zelensky speaking to the New York Times, what's the problem was the headline they put in it as he challenges the West over the quote unquote hesitations, shoot down what's in the sky over Ukraine and give us the weapons to use against Russian forces on the on the borders. Does he have a point here in terms of the U.S. and other allies needing to do more? Of course he does, Connell. He has a point. Um, and he knows we all know. Um, that the United States was about six months late in uh, providing and keeping the flow of weapons and ammunition, anti-aircraft, air defense, missiles um, coming to Ukraine. And so that six months um, was very painful, was very costly for the Ukrainians. They lost troops. They lost territory. Uh, they are having a difficult time because of our delay. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's right to be asking for it. Fortunately, the Congress finally did pass that legislation, as you've well reported, and it's starting to flow, but not fast enough. It needs to come in, and right. that's what he's urging us to do. What can we? What else can we do then? Um, you know, we, the eight. You know, it is what it is. So to your point, we should have passed it earlier. Maybe you could argue. Someone like you would argue, didn't happen. It's getting there. Is there anything that can be done? You know, in the in the near term, he's talking about more help from NATO. Is that realistic? I'll tell you what could be done immediately. Could be done tomorrow. Maybe is is going to happen soon. But what could? What we could do is change one policy, okay. and that is we could allow Ukrainians to fire at Russian military targets, Russian military units that are firing at them. Uh, Russians are attacking Ukrainians from just on the other side of the border. And they're still in Russia. Um, these are aircraft that are launching in Russia and launching weapons uh, at the Ukrainians across that border. Uh, these are ground forces uh, that are attacking by artillery and other missiles, ground uh, ground missiles. And, and what we've told the Ukrainians so far is you can't use the weapons that we've provided you to shoot at those military targets, even though they're shooting at you. <laughs> that policy could change, Kyle. That would be something that could change right away, and that would have an immediate effect. The other thing I thought was interesting in the interviews, he, he talked a little bit about the negotiations, possible negotiations for some sort of a ceasefire. And I wonder, you know, what he's open to at this point here. He's asked about, this is again from the same article, what's the problem um, that we just showed? Asked about potential ceasefire negotiations. He, meaning Zelensky, called for diplomacy that avoids direct talks with Russia, but rallies nations behind Ukraine's positions for an eventual peace settlement. So what do you think he is open to talking about now? Anything that he maybe wasn't open to talking about a few months back? Well, next month in June, right in the middle of June, right after the G7 summit, there is another summit that the Swiss yeah. um, are hosting. And the Swiss have invited a couple hundred, uh, they've invited about 150 nations. And uh, I understand about 60 nations have said yes. And some 45 heads of state are going to come to Switzerland next month. Um, at the invitation of the Swiss, in coordination with the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians have developed a plan of what a, an agreement, a settlement might look like. And the Ukrainians and the Swiss want to have a conversation with all of these nations at this summit um, about this plan. So, yes, he is very interested in what, what happens after... The, the the weapons are provided and the military so, has but done giving up land and in, in the Donbass and things like that. what what are they what, how far He's might they go? He's not talking about giving up land right. in Donbass, nor is he talking about giving up land in Crimea. He's talking about what happens to nuclear safety, what happens to food security, okay. what happens to humanitarian uh, issues like return of prisoners and return of children. Return of Ukrainian children from Russia. Those are the issues he wants to talk about next month in Switzerland. All right, Ambassador Taylor, as always, thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.